Hello everybody. I hope you have enjoyed your virtual tour of Seamus Heaney Listen Now Again thus far. My name is Sophie and we will be continuing our virtual tour into the exhibition's third section, Conscience, which corresponds to the element of water. Now, as we walk in, you will soon realise that this section is predominantly to do with Heaney's response to the political situation in Northern Ireland and to the pursuit of peace. The history of Northern Ireland has been marred by political tension and sectarian feuding. From the late 1960s, the world watched in despair as Northern Ireland unravelled into unrest and violence, with loyalist factions fighting for Northern Ireland to remain as part of the United Kingdom, while Republican groups wanted Northern Ireland to leave the United Kingdom and join a united Ireland. Now Heaney, among other writers, felt increasingly uncomfortable in this situation and the written word all of a sudden became very inadequate. Through all this, Heaney remained steadfast in maintaining that poetic voice. Now, the onset of the troubles coincided with Heaney's earlier work, and a lot of his earlier poems attempted to comment on the political situation in Northern Ireland, but he always stayed away from any sort of simplistic analysis of the situation. Heaney often referred to himself as part of the Troubles, and he wanted to really set out and comment on the deeply historical and complex nature of Northern Ireland. And he would do this by weaving the agony of the Irish Troubles into a broader historical frame. The first case in this section is entitled Political Poet. Heaney often struggled with the idea of being a political poet and what his writing should mean to his readers during these tumultuous times. You will have already heard from Catherine during your tour of excavations on how Heaney was inspired by Scandinavian archaeologist P.V. Glob. This thread of inspiration continues through this case as we see some really interesting pieces on how Heaney found inspiration to inform his understanding of his own situation from Eastern European poets such as Sheswa Miwash. You can also see a very personal letter that Heaney sent to English poet Ted Hughes, showing how he was inspired by those closer to home. Throughout this case, there are also some very telling pieces on how Heaney struggled to maintain an unbiased voice during these tumultuous times. We have a poem called The Flight Path, which is written about an encounter that Heaney had with Sinn Féin spokesperson Danny Morrison, as well as a poem entitled An Open Letter, which Heaney wrote in response to being included in the book of contemporary British poetry. This poem includes that infamous line, Be assured, my passport is green, and no glass of ours was ever raised to toast the Queen. While you are walking through conscience, it is impossible to ignore our troubles wall, which encompasses a large part of this section. The stark images of propaganda pieces and violent outbreaks accompanied by newspaper headlines tell the story of Northern Ireland's darkest days. It really affords the viewer and the visitor a chance to contemplate and appreciate how far we have come in the pursuit of peace. Moving on to our second case, you will see how Heaney attempted to use his craft to help others. The first piece is a letter written to Mary Fogarty of Amnesty International, for whom he wrote a poem entitled From the Republic of Conscience. This poem would go on to inspire the highest accolade given out by Amnesty International to a deserving social advocate each year, the Ambassador of Conscience Award. But this case is full to the brim of fascinating objects, including Heaney's copy of the Good Friday Agreement, which brought an end to violence in Northern Ireland, which was something Heaney often fought for. Toward the end of the case, you can see a replica of Heaney's Nobel Prize, which he won in 1995 for works of lyrical beauty and ethical depth. During your tour of Creativity with Lisa, you will have heard of Heaney's admiration for another Nobel Prize winner, W.B. Yeats. 
But you are now going to leave Conscience and join Jenny as she brings you through the marvels of Heaney's later life and poetry. Thank you for listening.